check it out. I seem to be in a Stevie Wonder mood lately for some reason. I'm not sure why, but let's talk about how to play these long riffs, these long lines from these iconic songs that you like to listen to. Uh, there's a trick to learning them in its entirety. Let's figure it out. Okay, so first trick. I may get chewed out for this one or a couple of bad comments. Uh, I don't care. Anyway, it's a trick and it's a cheat code that I use when learning songs like this. So while listening to music on YouTube, you can go at the bottom on the right hand side. There's a settings button that you can click where you can change the quality of the video. Uh, you can add the captions uh, of the video and also you can adjust the speed of the video. So if you go to the speed and you adjust it and you can slow the video down just in case the speed of the song is a little bit too quick for you to comprehend and to understand, you have that option to slow it down just a little bit, either half speed or a quarter of the speed or something like that. But anyway, that's one trick that you can use. You may have known that already. I'm not sure. A lot of people don't. It's very surprising who don't know that little trick. So use that to your advantage. Don't use it too much, but it's a little cheat code if it was something that was playing a little bit too fast for me that I could not get. So that's what I would use. That's for trick number one. Okay, so trick number two is grouping these notes together. You have a ton of notes in this long line. So what you want to do is split them up into groups, into sections, so it won't be too hard for you to retain all at the same time. So in the beginning, that may be too long of a line for you to remember. So break it up into groups, into sections. So first of all, we're dealing with the B major pentatonic scale, and it's a note inside of there that actually makes it a, a B blues scale. Uh, and it's a passing tone inside of there, but we'll get to that in a minute. That D, that makes that passing tone, almost makes it a blues scale. But you're dealing mostly with a B pentatonic major scale. So when learning and transcribing this line, that's one of the things that I wanted to know and wanted to learn and figure out of where it came from theoretically. So I'm dealing with a B major scale. I played it all the way through. I got all of the notes inside of it. I was using all of the notes of a B major scale or B uh, major pentatonic scale, including some passing tones like that D that's in there. Uh, but other than that, all you're dealing with is the B major pentatonic scale. So you have to learn that scale or know that scale all over the fretboard. Da -da 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 because it goes up in octave, it goes up in pitch. So you have to be ready to shift up if you need to, because it goes all the way up here. So it goes up there, but you want to be able to achieve that higher octave. So if you wouldn't know where that scale was up here, you kind of be lost and fishing around for things. So that's another thing. So that's actually another trick inside of a trick, but We'll just group those together. Anyway, so going back to grouping. So you may want to split it up into five note groups, six note groups, four note groups, whatever you feel comfortable with remembering and retaining at the time. So in the beginning, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, right? So a group of six notes. You may want to stop there. And then the next part of the next group. That's it, that much. So those groups of notes that actually end on a certain cadence or a certain phrase. And there's a little break there inside of the song where it skips and goes to a, a jump of an octave. Now you can add that extra part in there. So you can do that over again. And don't be afraid to repeat these sections, guys, to be able to retain them. So if you learn them, just repeat them over and over again. Don't be afraid to put a metronome on. One, two, three, four. You can repeat that over and over again. So you can practice it that way along with the other sections and the other groups of this line. So I won't go over the whole line with you guys. I just wanted to give you some tips on how to figure this out. And if I just showed you a whole entire thing, it'll be tough for you to go and learn another line on your own. So that's why I want to give you the tools and the tricks to help you do it and help you learn another song that you're interested in learning. So uh, let's I'll actually go through a part of it. So I'll play that in sections so you guys can get a feel for it. And that leads me to my next tip and my next trick. That's actually positioning of this line because it's stretched in. It's uh, stretched out between so many frets and this line is so wide. It's stretched so far through the fretboard. You have to have decent fretboard knowledge. And that, like I said, that leads me to my next thing. 
positioning of this line, the way that you want to play each section, each phrase. So I can play it like, say, for instance, in the beginning, I can play. Doo, doo, da, doo, doo, da, doo. I can play it that way, starting with the first finger, or I can play. Doo, doo, da, doo, da, doo, da, doo. I can play it with the second finger in that second position. One, four, one, four. Right. So made dealing with the major scale, you, ha you have one, three, two, six, five. Same thing here. One, three, two, six, five. Same exact thing. So it's just up to you on how you want to position this and how you want your fingers to be positioned while playing this line. And actually, you have to be able to set up yourself mentally to get to the next section. OK, so when we learn that next section, what is it? All right. Doom. So we have to shift up a little bit more. So I wouldn't necessarily want to be down here. Do that, do that, do that. I wouldn't want to make that huge shift. So you see, I played the same exact thing, but in a different position. So that's also important to know because the efficiency on which you play it, you have to be able to do that quickly as well, because this line goes by pretty quick. And it was funny because the last lesson, when I talked about the quickness of Jocko, I had a lot of comments about that one. And it was a little, <laughs> it was funny, uh, but learning how to play quick or learning how to play fast. That's one of these reasons right here. That's a prime example because this line goes by fast and you won't be able to play it at your slow speed. So you have to be able to have some quickness in you to be able to do that. So that's the importance of playing a little bit faster or speed. But anyway, you also have to keep in mind that you want to play clean, clear and precise. Like I tell you guys all the time. Anyway, so that's the importance of playing with the position. So I'm just going to play this through and I'm going to show you guys in sections. So you can figure it out or play it yourself if you're interested in learning this line, but just wanted to mainly give you some tips to play it. So I want to play it all the way through for you just with sections repeating. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's our group right there. So on to the next part. One, two, here's a big jump. Four. That's the next group. On to the next part. One, two, three, four. That's the next group. All right. On to the next part. One, two, starting from the F sharp. And that's the end of the line. Right. So that's all we have to work with. So I want to play it all together. I'm going to speed it up to real time. It's around maybe 105 uh, BPM around that uh, beats per minute. So we're going to play it to that. OK, here we go all together Four, one, two, three, four. So that was the entire line played all together. So I grouped it in groups of four, but I can do that in groups of four because it's a little bit easier for me to retain more notes at the same time. But you may want to group this into groups of six or uh, eight groups or nine groups. It doesn't matter whatever it takes for you to get it done. Everybody's different. Everybody learning curve is different, um, especially when you're learning lines like this and when you're not used to playing these types all over the fretboard. And I wanted to make a side note. Playing up here, I could have kept going with that line and played. Then I would have had to shift all the way down there like that. And if you notice when I did that second group or that third group, I played that and started it down here. So I really only had to do that one shift in the beginning. So instead of. I played it this way. So I only had to do two small little shift and in shifts instead of two huge shifts in the beginning. So that was just a few tips to be able to help you learn lines and iconic songs like this one. It's so much fun to play. And I know you guys want to be able to play that and execute the lines whenever you feel like it. So practice this. If it's too fast for you, use that little slowdown function. Don't overuse it though. 
but you have that function there to help you out when you're learning something and playing something on YouTube. Uh, but anyway, so make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. And if you guys are new here, hit that red subscribe button down here. I finally got it, guys. Uh, red subscribe button down here along with the notification bell icon if you're interested in learning more like this or diving a little bit deeper into learning the base and learning these crazy lines and how to achieve them yourself. Base Nation Academy is where you want to be. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, you just get personal feedback from me. It's an online school for bass players. It's an awesome learning platform for all styles of bass players not only me but we have other instructors as well along with courses and live stream classes weekly webinars uh we have video q a sections you get personal feedback and all that good stuff anyway go check it out i'll leave that up to you and i'll see you guys in the next one